love gay fish. Okay. Let's all right. Do hold this. on a second. So before we get started here. All right. Gay fish. All right. And okay. Hold on a second. All right. Okay. Excellent. Here we go. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Gay fish. Uh, all right. And, and you, you promise you're not going to cancel me. Uh, I'm not going to cancel you. I, I baited you into this debate because I have opinions about this fucking movie. Fine. Very well. Hit me okay. with your, hit me with your opinions. So I should say it's not the worst movie ever. I okay. think there's some really good things about the movie that I really like. The soundtrack is fucking phenomenal. True. True. It is. Yeah. Yep. Like we're, we're, we're on the same page here. Hans Zimmer yep. does some fucking phenomenal stuff. True. So I have no qualms there. But I do have a bulleted list here. I have like seven fucking points here of specific shit. Holy shit, shit. you're serious yeah. about your hatred for no. this movie, Gay Fish. And here's the thing, I've only seen this movie once, but like when Maybe. it came out in theaters. This movie came out seven years ago, and I remember all this shit from seeing it once. Okay. So this is fucking serious. To all right, me. This all right, fucking been in my brain. Okay, okay. we're debating uh, Reza Sutra, just so you know. The movie we're debating right now is Interstellar. Uh, I should put this on the thing. Hold on. Let me let me just add this so people know. Debating Let's go. debating Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. There we go. All right, let's move this over here so we can debating Interstellar. Okay, hold on, wait. I gotta shrink this thing down. It's covering my head. There we go. Okay, hit me with it. Hit me with why the movie sucks or whatever. Okay, so I have some stuff that goes from minor nitpicks to bigger stuff, so let's start with the minor nitpicks. Okay, the fine. first one, the, the the subplot with his son, like, that dude is a tertiary character who's basically only there to be, like, a, a tertiary conflict for Jessica Chastain's character. She's a secondary character, and it's a secondary plot for a secondary character. Every single time we went back to drama on the farm, I was like, why are we not in space right now? True. It was, Good point. It was so yep. distracting. It had nothing. It okay. added nothing to the movie. It was just filler. And I know Christopher Nolan likes to get his movies to three-hour runtime, but he doesn't need to. So, cut the sun. I don't give a shit about the sun. Whatever. Okay. That's fair. Cut that. Yeah, I barely remember the sun. Second, when he's entering the black hole, like, I'm okay with the stuff once he's inside the black hole because we don't know what happens when you're in a black hole. But he should never have been able to get into the black hole because as you approach the event horizon, you will spaghettify. Do you know what this is? Yeah, yeah, I saw this. Uh, I've seen the spaghettification thing from uh, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, Epic Bacon Chungus. Yeah, for, so for people who don't know... Uh, as you approach the event horizon, the level of gravitational pull between, say, like your feet and your head becomes so massive that it literally stretches you out and you basically become spaghetti. Anything approaching an event horizon is going to have such massive tidal pull force differential. I don't know the exact words. I'm not a phys physicist. My brother would probably be able to explain it better. But you will just be turned into spaghetti. You will die. He should never have been able to cross the event horizon and get into there. Okay. Except I have a counterpoint to this, which is... Okay. It's a movie. Oh, I agree. It's Shit a movie. happens in movies all the time that doesn't... Right. But yeah. this movie, like, really fucking aims to get things, like, right. Like, once you cross the event horizon, okay, you're into speculative fiction. But, like, this movie sure. was really trying to get things right. Was it like like they they literal no like like there were papers written on the modeling of of the uh, of the black hole in that movie like uh, scientists that, that's such a Christopher dreamed, Nolan thing yeah oh it, it really is scientists dreamed of having the the movie budgets to properly model a, a black hole like in in this CGI thing that Christopher Nolan with his two hundred million dollar budget was able to do so like th yeah no there's like legit shit that went on with the black hole in that and that's fucking okay awesome. okay. So he should have spaghettified before he entered it, is my point. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, yep. Okay, let's see the next point. Okay, so the wormhole was supposedly created by fifth dimensional humans from the future. I think I remember that. Is that what you remember? No. You I don't, don't think remember that, was, that? I don't think that was part of it, was it? Well, no, because remember they, they, they kept talking about the fifth dimensional humans from the future? 
like when when they saw the hand coming through but then later we found out it was actually just matthew mcconaughey inside the black hole that was interacting with people am i misremembering wait i wait hold on a second wait i remember i do remember i do remember that there were people that there was a part with the hand and the dust that was you know floating upwards or whatever but i don't remember anything about fifth dimensional humans it was it was only a couple times mentioned, but it was like um, uh, uh, Anne Hathaway's character was talking about. It. He's like, yeah, we we think they're fifth dimensional humans from the future, basically that are trying to help us so that we can save humanity. But like, basically every single uh, evidence that they had for that was actually Matthew McConaughey interacting with them from the past, from inside the black hole. So we don't actually know what created the wormhole. Oh. The wormhole is kind of just like a mystery. Yeah. Like basically all the evidence they had. So you're saying the, the, the humans, wormhole other than sus. the wormhole was all Matthew McConaughey. Okay. So we don't actually know why that wormhole showed up in orbit of Saturn. Okay. Now that's not necessarily a problem, like because it was the impetus for starting the movie. Right. So th th this is a minor point. It's just that all the other evidence that they had. Mm -hmm was just matthew mcconaughey who is okay. not a fifth dimensional human from the future or maybe he is but he didn't know it yet well he was a fifth dimensional human once he answered the the black hole but like he didn't create the wormhole well maybe like he did. if they had if they had no 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 we saw everything that he did inside the wormhole hmm. inside the black hole if he had like if they had had him push a book through a bookshelf that created the wormhole i would have been fine with that what if the wor what if the wormhole was created by another appendage that you couldn't see on on camera his dick created the wormhole okay all right that's what i'm trying to say yeah all right okay all right let's move on to the next one when michael Caine's on his deathbed in the hospital okay could you understand a single thing he was saying yeah no i don't remember anything he was explaining like the whole lie that they had kept up but he was like finally explaining everything to jessica chastain who was explaining yeah, why did he, they do that he was i think he was explaining that oh yeah no there's no saving humans we're just going to grow new humans on the colonies or something. I think that's what it was, except I can't be sure because the sound mix was so fucking bad. <gasps> oh, wait, I do remember that. Michael Cole was saying through his fucking mouth. You, you know? Yeah, I remember it that It reminded now. me yep. of when I saw a preview of The Dark Knight Rises. It was like the first seven minutes of that movie with Bane in the plane, but it was like the first sound mix where you could not understand a single thing Bane said. And it was just like Christopher Nolan once people with masks on to sound like people with masks on in real life but like that doesn't make for a good movie if you can't understand them so yeah no that that whole okay. sound mix That's again fair. this is this is you know it's a nitpick but considering he was giving like a major plot point at that moment i had to struggle really hard there were no subtitles in the theater i had to basically infer about half of what he was saying and okay. that was just really bad fair enough that's fair technical flaw okay. yeah Okay, so the planet that Matt Damon was on, it had those like solid clouds. What's the what the fuck is up with the solid clouds? Solid clouds? Yeah, when they were like going on that planet, they're like, oh, those are clouds, and they crashed into one because it wasn't a cloud; it was like a big solid chunk of rock that was floating in the air. Um, I thought it was ice, or ice, or what? Like, okay, I don't care what it was made of. It was a big floating thing that looked like a cloud, but it turned out to be solid. Okay. What's wrong with that? Um, the problem with that is that for something that massive to be kind of like floating in the air or to be suspended with not much support underneath it, mm -hmm. you would need a planet with very low gravity. Unless, and they, uh, and unless they, there they, was they, a buoyant they, force. Like if, uh, a, if a um, if a if a uh, another uh, higher a volume. Um, substance was underneath it well the, the uh i mean we saw that it was just air surrounding it so a buoyant force that would keep it up would need to be like incredibly dense air what if you just like, couldn't see it well it doesn't matter if you couldn't see it you would be able to see the actors struggling against it hmm. have you considered that it was a movie Yes, I have considered that it's a fucking movie, but we're into nitpick territory, mm -hmm. and I baited you onto this, so we're going to talk true, about it. True, true, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I know it's a fucking movie, but again, as we established previously, 
papers, scientific papers, were written about this movie. Christopher Nolan. Well, that sounds like that's, to get I things mean, accurate. Just gonna say, I I think I think that that might be on the scientists and not on Christopher Nolan in this case because it's it's. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, what kind of scientist is like? I'm gonna do my paper on a movie. The the kind of scientist that really really wants a 200 million dollar CGI model of a, a black hole to be created. Fair. Well, have you considered that maybe? The three hundred million dollars CGI black hole model was the like the rest of the movie was just an excuse, and that was just Christopher Nolan doing his buddy a favor. Uh, I mean, fine, but like you know what? If you're going to have scientific papers written off a movie, I'm gonna fucking nitpick okay. any kind I mean, of that's scientific fair, that's bullshit fair. that I see from it. That's fair. Okay, uh-huh. so like either either the planet should have had such low gravity that we should have seen them bouncing around, or it should have had such a thick atmosphere that we should have seen them struggling to move through it. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see next point matt damon himself this is the same planet um oh yeah i remember that part astronauts go through probably some of the most rigorous psych evaluations of anyone okay like like even more so than 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 test pilots you are going through insanely dangerous uh, um oh my god okay y'all better vote too or i will fucking ban you okay so uh yeah Matt Damon should have been going yeah, I through think, the most uh, I just rigorous think... psych evals possible. And he was the one who fucked everything up. He did fuck he was everything like, up. Yeah, no, like, like that, sh- that shit should have been caught. It should have been caught early on that he was not in the right mental space to go on a permanent mission. Well, have you considered that maybe, um, uh, maybe men will literally go into deep space instead of going to a therapist? <laughs> i mean yes that's true however in order to go into deep space this matt damon would have had to gone to have gone to a therapist like that's how nasa operates what if he literally f- f- didn't do it he didn't he just pretended he he just maybe lied. he faked his doctor note he just I, i'm pretty sure nasa has its own like psychologists on staff like I'm pretty sure he couldn't just fake a note. He would have had to like gone to one of their staff psychs, and they mm. would have to sign off on it. It's possible. I mean, you 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 look. All right, I I will I will grant. At this point in time, maybe he went crazy NASA, after. NASA is under budget. We know that. True. Like, most, at this point, most people think the moon landing was faked. Like teachers were teaching that the moon landing was faked. So maybe they just didn't have the money, and it was a desperate last gasp thing and so they sent somebody who wasn't prepared so i'm willing to concede that a little bit okay that's fair but i still think matt damon they should have caught that shit before they sent him out true i mean big mistake putting matt damon on your mission sure um yeah like uh, how many movies how many millions of dollars have we spent saving matt damon a lot can we just stop at some point a lot yeah all right true these were all my nitpicks Okay. Now comes my main one. All right. Oh, let's hit the real spicy ones. All right, let's do it. Fucking Anne Hathaway's speech about how love is the only force that, was that a little transcends cringe. space and time. That was a little it's cringe. It's literally like just your brain has made a connection with the person. Just because the person's light years away, your brain doesn't actually have a connection with that person light years away. It's a chemical connection. Your brain still remembers that person. You still love that person. It's not a physical force. It's just brain chemistry. That was the stupidest part of that movie, and they made it like the most profound thing in the movie. And it was nothing. Like, I could have explained it to Christopher Nolan in five fucking minutes when he was writing the script, and he would have been like, shit, you're right. I should probably fix that. Well, I mean, I think perhaps uh, you um, have forgotten the love molecule, which is uh, incredibly powerful. Um, Where's that on the periodic table? It's not been put on the periodic table because it uh, transcends the well, periodic table. Well, then it's table. fucking bullshit. Yeah, you're uh, science andying the love story here. I really fucking am because when if you're, you're like going... when you're when no, you're... no 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 hang, hang on hang on no no I am not science ending the love story. Christopher Nolan was science ending the love story. Maybe, he was the one right. who was like, you know what, we're going to have this thing in here where love is uh, the fifth fundamental force or something like that. Is that oh. anglophobia? No. Is that anglophobia that oh, I hear oh, in your voice? 
Absolutely. Christopher Nolan, he should apologize to the world for being British. But, like, no. Th this, this was the crux of the movie. This was, like, the thesis of the movie, that love is something that transcends space and time. It's not. You just can't transcend your brain, and love is, like, a fundamental human emotion. Well, what if it does, though? Have you considered it that? It doesn't! Like, no, love is literally a human emotion. It's not a physical force. If you want to call it a physical force, you're going to have to do the work to prove it, and you're not going to do that in a Hollywood blockbuster. Okay. What if you were like, what if somebody proposed to you, and then they were like, I love you so much, will you marry me? And then you were like, well, actually, uh, marriage is just a legal document, and uh, that would just refer to our uh, state-sanctioned relationship, and love is just a chemical that bubbles around in your brain based around mental snapshots of the people that we remember and care about, but we don't if actually have a, those people in our head. If I was on a space mission, and the person who proposed to me was light years away, mm -hmm. uh, trying to save humanity, mm -hmm. no, I still wouldn't say that shit. Hmm. because i'm not in a christopher nolan movie and i would understand what love is and i'd be like fuck yeah let's get fucking married hmm. but i wouldn't say it's a fundamental force that transcends the universe i'd be like well it's probably going to be hard uh it's probably going to take a couple years before we can hook back up because we're going to different planets and different solar systems so i gotta launch back into space and get through the wormhole to get back to you so i don't know and I don't know, maybe we're just going to have to build, like, uh, 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 get one of those robots to officiate the, the, the marriage or something. Oh, the, the cubo bots or whatever? The square I, guys? I, oh, oh, I love I those. Like dudes. I like those, those guys. They were cool. Yeah, those are great. Have, but, you, like, have you considered maybe it would be um, maybe it would be better if, like, um, do you think it would have been cooler if uh, instead of going into the black hole, if um, the main character guy threw a wedding ring through the black hole through time and then married the girl in the past? So that they would be connected literally by the ring through the past? Would that be cool? Well, it wasn't Matthew, Matthew McConaughey who was trying to marry someone. It was Anne Hathaway who's like, like, it was a character that we never even met. It was like one of the astronauts had gone to one of the other planets that like she loved. And she was like, I'm oh, never right. going to see him again, but what, I still love him. And what, if like, she well, threw, what if she threw the ring through time? into the black well, hole or what if he did it what if she gave him the ring to throw to her husband through the black hole and then he did it but then the space time made it so that he accidentally married her husband and then there was like a whole drama thing with that that would be pretty interesting, i mean wouldn't it? I, I i am down for gay space husbands but here's the problem if they had thrown the wedding ring through the black hole then i hope whoever is going to put that on has an extremely wide finger because that ring would have spaghettified hmm what if it had um, anti-spaghetti coating? That's not a thing. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Um, Cyborg, if you're here, I have know you you're read a all. Have you read all of the all? Of I the... have read all science. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Aw, thank you, Coco. Thank you so much for the incredibly generous twenty dollars. Sorry, the alerts aren't working. Heart. There you go. Um. So. Hmm. True, true. It's very, it's very difficult, Freya. All right. Do you have any other uh, contentions? So I want to, I want to be sure. I want to hear your full case before I make any decisions. The love is a fundamental force that transcends space and time. That was my main one. Okay. I had the other ones to pad time. They are things that I, I'm Fair concerned enough. about, but this was the main one that really irked me to the point that I couldn't call it a good movie. Well, I mean, okay. So now I will counter by saying um, that just because it's, it's, it's narrative is incoherent um and tacky and cheesy and it focused on science but didn't deliver on that doesn't mean that it's not an entertaining movie to watch i was entertained when i watched the movie See? there were problems with it problems with it but it is an entertaining want... movie and there are a couple of good scenes like for example the scene where he goes to the space station and like his daughter's like super fucking old I thought that oh, scene yeah. was very poignant. For, yeah, and, like, when he dope. goes back and, like, his house has been turned into, like, a museum, like, that was fucking cool, too. Wait, did he go back yeah. to Earth? I don't remember him going back to Earth. I thought he went straight from the Saturn space station to go find Anne Hathaway. Uh, no, he goes back and he see and he walks around in his house and it's like a um, it's like a they turned it into a museum. So he's like all his furniture is like all museumified. Uh, I I'd, I'd need to watch it. And then he like goes back, I, and then he I decides. only watched it once. I thought he just went straight from Saturn to to go find Anne Hathaway. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I thought I thought that was pretty good. Like, that was the part that got me in the movie because it was like, I don't know. Like, I, th I feel like that would have worked as a vignette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, no, there's good parts in the movie. It's too think... long, I think. Well, yes, that's Christopher Nolan. Uh, Christopher Nolan is like... Zack Snyder aspires to be Christopher Nolan, and Christopher Nolan still makes too long of movies. Zack Snyder. Well, have you seen... Ha I, may I submit to the court uh, Jesus Joker? Uh, joker fied jesus yeah i saw that picture and the first time i saw it i was like is it's a shit post a, nope is it is this a photoshop to no of course it's not because it's zach fucking snyder <sighs> jesus fight uh, yeah snyder. jesus fied joker or joker fied jesus hard to say have um, you heard my my take on zach snyder do i want to zach snyder has mastered the aestheticization of profundity which means he knows how to make things that look like they are deep without having put any thought into them true and it's like he 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 doesn't understand any of the source material that he adapts he just wants to make cool comic book frames in cinema and if he were like directing music videos he'd probably be one of the best music video directors out there but he's making movies and he doesn't know how to make movies it's unfortunate well, I think that we could solve most of the problems in your thesis by coating, um, coating the love molecules in our body with anti-spaghettification and uh, anti-spaghettification coating, and I think we would be fine. Okay, but what would the Italians say? Well, they can just deal with it because we have to save the planet. I mean, that's fair. In the name also, of love. fuck Italians, so, you know. I'm, I'm wow! Sorry. Wow! What the fuck? Hey! I what the fuck, gay fesh? Well, you think you could just come on here and and spout a phobia on my timeline here? True. Fucking, just think you can fucking waltz in here and no, I don't spaghettify think that. everyone's feelings. I oh don't God, think it's that. happening again. The rum I just drank was thinking that. I see. I see. I apologize to none of the Italians. In of your course audience. you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. What would Hank Pecker think exactly? Hank Pecker is proud of his Italian heritage, of his Italian heritage. I don't know who Hank Pecker is. You don't know who Hank Pecker is? Damn, sucks. Nope. You're missing out on the best politics streamer in the world. Cyborg says he wants to explain how oh I am wrong. Oh, my God. Oh, fine, Cyborg. Get the fuck in here. Get in the waiting room, Cyborg. <sighs> Pasta la vista, gay fish. Exactly. All right, cyborg. All right, cyborg. All right, cyborg. Just fucking let's do this. Uh, get it. Come on, hit hit gay fish with, with all you got. Okay, gay fish. You brought up a lot of points here, and I just have to say, like every one of them was wrong, except maybe the cloud thing. I actually don't know. Like I don't remember how like those were structured. Hang on, like, you're you're even okay. gonna argue that the fucking brother with the burning down the farm plot was was valuable to the story? Yeah. All right, let's hear it. Okay, okay, here we go. So I think you're kind of overlooking like the thematic elements of the movie for the um, scientific errors that were made. Like th there was like a thing going on about like science versus like faith and whatnot, and like hard science like questioning people's faith and like higher forms of reality and such. And right. How, okay, and how did that apply to the fucking brother who burned down the farm? Um, okay, so that was just kind of about, like, um, like the sister trying to break from, like, their life and, like, just kind of, like, out on the farm, right? So, like, the whole bit about that was just trying to, like, escape from, like, their old life and, like, the past and whatnot. Okay, All right, I'm hearing you. Yeah, so, like, um, if you remember, like, the movie is kind of, like, a society kind of torn down um, based off of its own avarice. Like, um, of course, they used the plight instead of, like, I don't know, like, capitalism or some shit to say, like, this is why society is kind of, like, in ruins is, like, all the resources got exhausted because of the plight. Yeah, okay. Before like, we go too we, much we, further, like, are you positing that that the brother burning down the farm was really about saying that, you know, we live in a society that is um, constantly at a very, very like high temperature is that what you're trying to say actually i thought the sister started the fire I'm well you know sure. i don't remember who started the fire i just remember it i, I, I wish that brother had died in the fire 
okay, what happened is the sister started the fire because the brother's a dick and whatnot, and it okay, was like kind of like right. symbolic of like the past and whatnot because like um she's mm. trying to forge a future for humanity out in space and whatnot, and she's like being held to the farm and shit. So she like burned that shit down. That sounds about right. To, like okay. escape that shit. Yes. Um mm. and like you know kind of like unlock the secrets. Very and shit. cool. Very cool. Um, but yeah, I would say the part about sp like spaghettification in the science paper, I really have to like push back on. Okay, so they made a big deal about supermassive black holes because it's theoretically possible from like our current understanding of science that you could enter a black hole with a one-way trip if it's supermassive. Because they're, I think it's something about their like rotational speed is like slower. Ooh. Like um, black holes well, rotate. Like, well, and then secondly, on, no, on, let me right, finish. Hang on, hang let on. me finish. You've already no, no, did all your points. I, no, you did no, all your no, points no, before no, no. I got I on. To, I have to. No, I'm sorry. I no, have to push I'm back sorry. on this. You, you already did all your points. No, I have it's to push time. back on the rotation thing. Rotation does not affect gravity. It affects like um, I, I I'm not a physicist, so I can't explain it like all the way. But like um, rotation has a huge effect on like. Um, mechanics of a black hole like um, black holes spin and it has like huge consequences with like trying to interact with them okay like, but the spaghettification is purely a matter of your distance from the center of the event horizon and the 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 difference in gravity between the the furthest point of your body and the nearest point of your body to the event horizon and the massive changes in gravity and tidal forces that is nothing to do with spin that is purely about mass and gravity what if human what if a human was able to flatten themselves into a two-dimensional ring so that all points oh. of their body would approach the black hole at the same time yeah if you could do that then you'd be fine um i, I really really how did I really get rid makes of you think paper i was i had a paper open about this like a second ago i guess i like lost it because you started you were talking about the like the movie having people write scientific papers about it. I actually was just like, where's this coming from? Where's this coming from? I actually was, had to research this and you're was, actually wrong on this no, entirely. I, no, I, I'm pretty sure that the, that, that the model of the black hole has been used in like scientific research. <gasps> um, okay. I think it's probably as was gay the fetish of, pushing misinformation on this panel. I, I am yes. almost positive. Let me let me double check this. I'm going to Google this right now. What a twist. Okay, while they Google it, I will explain what I've already found. Um, <gasps> the team, oh, shit. The movie you came team with the receipts. The movie team for Interstellar had a bunch of scientists on it to help produce the best model of a um like a super dense or super massive black hole. And they wrote a paper. I just posted as the paper in fucking the chat. Okay, yeah. It, like People didn't write papers about the movie. They wrote paper. They had a team of scientists write a paper as they were theorizing, like the construction of a super black hole model. Yes, a super massive black hole model. I didn't say they write a wrote a paper about the movie. I said they wrote a paper about the black hole that they modeled in the movie. Um, I oh. I'm making an appeal to Demon Mama here. Did they not, on multiple occasions, say they wrote papers about this movie? Yes, I think that's true. I do okay. think that claim was made. Like, I would not, I would not have disagreed. Okay, you're being so bad vehemently. faith because it's very obvious that when I said that, I was re specifically referring to the modeling of the black hole in the movie. Oh, okay, my it, is, it is very it bad, is very faith. bad faith. It's the way of that's like you bad interpret, faith. It is very bad faith of you to interpret it in such a way as to cancel me for this. <gasps> um, all I have to say is uh, that was a, that was excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to cool with the ad homies here, okay? Ad 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 homs are not allowed in this chat, and I'm gonna have to silence you, Gayfesh, if you're gonna keep engaging in fruitless ad no, hominem don't logical. Me. Thank you, knife naughty words. Yes. No. <laughs> Coming with the science. Find me the paper. I, I I just lost it because I had to pull up the thing about them saying papers were written about the movie. Um. Which I don't even think I finished my point there. Uh oh. With oh yeah, okay. yeah, you're right, you're right. I didn't inter interrupt you because I had to push back on that. Uh -huh. But go well, ahead. I can address your pushback. Um, I think any reasonable interpreter, um, is someone who's like partially philosophically trained in translation of like people's sentences. You're supposed to at least come up with like, not at least, you're supposed to come up with a few translations of what people logically mean. And I would say that when you say someone like scientists are writing papers about a movie like it assumes that the movie was made and the papers were written about 
the movie in a scientific manner. That's how I think any reasonable person would have interpreted that sentence. Because, Fake news. Like, Fake news. Okay, listen here. Okay, hold on. I, I don't. Wait, hold on. Hold on a second, everyone. I need to consult the chart. I don't know whether you're supposed to say cringe, yikes, seethe, uh, or uh, rent free to a response of uh, fake news or cope. I say snowflake. Is it cope? It's cope. It's cope. Oh, cope is what you say to fake news? Okay. Uh, I'll take it your word on that for right now. Personally, though, I just like to throw snowflake out at conservatives whenever. And I feel like fake news is like they're. Are you are point. you trying to are you trying to imply right now that Gayfesh is a conservative? That feels like a bit of an ad hominem. I'm feeling so. You know what? Right that's now. a fair interpretation of what I just said, but that is not what I imply. But I do not like the use of fake news because it implies a devaluing of the media inherently. Fair enough. I was saying it memingly. Yeah. Meaning? And like. I don't Wait, believe are you saying person. that you were memeing here? So this really was bad faith. So Cyborg was correct in saying that you were bad faith. No, 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 no. <laughs> Cy always wins. I there's only miss. one conclusion I here. Miss. There's only one. There's only one conclusion here, which is that oh, he left call. <gasps> he quit the call. Well, he, he declared victory and left before we could. That means him. that means gay fesh because uh, you hang up. You hung up second. That means you win automatically. That's how it works. The rules of the rules of internet debate means whoever hangs up first automatically loses. True. So congratulations, Gayfesh, on your first uh, debate victory over Cyborg. True. It's a shame. Uh, shame you uh, weren't able to, um, you know, topple the champ. But it's all good. I, oh, I understand. I'm, so I'm sorry. What point did you win against me? No, oh, I wasn't fighting you. We were talking about two different things. See, you came in with the discussion of whether it's a good or a bad movie, and I came in whether it was an inter entertaining or not movie. It is an entertaining movie. Even you admitted you that. You said it was a good movie when I challenged you. No, I didn't. I said it was an entertaining movie. You said it was a good movie. Let's check, check the, the VOD. VOD. Yeah, check the VOD. All right. Everyone all right. check the VOD. Check the I'm VOD, pretty, everybody. I'm check almost positive she said it was a good movie. Did I say it was a good movie? I thought I said it was an entertaining movie. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah, sure. good is subjective anyway. Shit. All right. All right. Well, Gay Thanks Fash, for thank you on. for coming on. It was I, I do find your case uh, generally agreeable, to be completely honest. I do uh, think that the movie didn't really hold up very well plot-wise, but I still thought it was entertaining nonetheless, and there were some poignant scenes. So, thanks, Sounds Gay Fash. Right. Have a great night. You too. Yeah.